Hey team, we're gonna learn how we can automatically create thumbnail images using face detection with Cloudinary. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is the first time here, make sure you hit subscribe and click that little notification bell for future updates. Cloudinary is a media platform that comes with a variety of products, but we're going to look at programmable media, which gives us the ability to transform and optimize our images when delivering them into the browser. And one of those transformations is being able to resize and crop your images, and you can do that intelligently. Particularly, we're going to use face detection, which is going to allow us to crop our images so that we can center those images on those faces that are detected. And in order to do this, I created this demo project, which is just a really simple Stranger Things wiki with a few characters on it, where we're going to be able to transform these images and turn it into a better looking gallery. We'll be able to get started with this really easily without having to worry about building any of that UI by using Create Next App with the starter. And to actually interface with the Cloudinary image API, we're going to use the Cloudinary build URL package, which is going to allow us to easily transform our images when we provide our Cloudinary cloud name into our project. And to get started, you're going to want to have a free Cloudinary account, which you can get over at cloudinary.com. So if you want to follow along, I have this demo for the Stranger Things wiki inside of my YouTube description if you want to actually use this project. But we're going to head down and we're going to copy and paste this command where we're going to run yarn create next app or npx if you prefer. And inside of my terminal, I'm going to paste that right inside where it's going to go ahead and copy that template down to my local project. It's going to install all those dependencies and pretty much get this project ready for me to go uh, with my local setup. Once it's done, I can CD now into that directory and I can even run yarn dev, which is going to start up my development server locally. And I can visit that right inside of my browser, where if we look in the background, Next.js is going to start compiling this page for us and serve it for us right inside of this browser, where we can see that we now have that local version of our Stranger Things wiki. Now, just to quickly take a look about what's inside, the really only important thing here is we have our index.js file, which is our homepage, which is going to have all of our character data that's pulled in from a JSON file that I currently have set up that has a bunch of the character information. And it also has a link and it has an image for each one that's currently hosted using Imager, where if we scroll down, we can see that we're mapping through each of those characters. We're displaying them on the page and we're just simply using an image tag and plopping that right inside the page. Now, as we can see, we have our basic page with all of our character images on it. But if we notice right away, it kind of looks a little bit disorganized where we have all of our character images, but they're all different shapes and sizes and they're all different formats where it's kind of looking like a little bit of a mess where we can see that Eleven's image is a little bit wider, where Mike Wheeler's is a little bit taller. Same with Lucas, his is wider, and it just doesn't make it look very consistent throughout each of the different characters. So to fix this, we're going to learn how we can resize and crop all these images on the fly using Cloudinary. So like I mentioned earlier, we're going to use this package called Cloudinary Build URL, where if we scroll down here, we can see that we can simply add it with this line using yarn or npm. So in my terminal, I'm gonna paste that in and it's going to install the dependency. And once that's finished, I can simply run yarn dev and spin back up my server. Now, once we have it installed, we can see we have kind of two options as to how we actually start using this. But really the difference here is because the second example is using set config in order to declare the cloud name. And we're going to actually use that because we want to do that outside of the actual loop of the different characters, where we're going to need to use this build URL for every single one of our characters. So to start, I'm going to copy this import statement and I'm going to go ahead and paste that right in at the top of my file. Where now the next thing I want to do is use this set config function where right before I define this actual function for home, I'm going to go ahead and run that function where I'm going to be able to set that cloud name. Now this cloud name is going to be specific to your particular Cloudinary account. Now in order to find your cloud name, you can head over to your Cloudinary dashboard where we can see at the top of the page under account details, we have this cloud name field where mine in particular is Colby demo. So once you have your cloud name, you're going to want to replace that demo string with your own Cloudinary cloud name. Now, of course, you can try to use mine, but it's not going to work as I'm going to make sure that I actually restrict this to only be allowed to use for the domains that I'm actually using it for, which is one of the security features of Cloudinary. But now that we actually have our cloud name configured, we can go ahead and actually start building those URLs for every single one of our images. So next, I'm going to go ahead and copy this build URL example, and I'm going to paste it right before this return statement inside of my characters loop, where we can see that we're doing a few things here. The first thing we're doing is we're actually passing an argument, which is going to be the ID of the actual image, 
but we can see that it's also passing in a few different resize options for transformations by default from that example. Now, because we're serving our images from an external source currently, we wanna be able to pass in that URL directly into this build URL function instead of a Cloudinary ID so that we can transform it on the fly. Now, in order to do this, we need to actually configure the way that we're using Cloudinary a little bit differently, but particularly on our actual options, we want to set the storage type in order to fetch as opposed to upload the particular image. If we head over to the advanced section of the build URL documentation, we can actually see an example of this for displaying a remote image, where if we look here, we can see that we're setting the storage type on the cloud property object inside of that function options as the storage type of fetch, which is going to be just the string of fetch, which you can optionally use as cloud API utilities in order to pass in the actual constant value. But for our case, I'm going to go ahead and create that new property of cloud with the empty object, and I'm going to pass in storage type of fetch. But now instead of passing in this string for an ID, I'm going to grab the character image source URL, and I'm going to pass that directly into the build URL function. I'm also going to update this 500 pixels to 280 pixels, just like we actually see on the image itself. But now before we move any further, let's console log out this source constant and let's see what it's actually going to show us inside the browser. If we now open up our page, we can actually look inside the developer tools, the console particularly, and if we open one of these images up in a new tab, we can see that it worked. We can see that it's coming from cloudinary.com in the URL bar, though I'm sure it looks a little bit small inside this video, but we can see that it's actually skewed a little bit and it doesn't have the correct ratio. Now, before we go further, I wanna kinda take a minute to look at this URL, where let me copy this into my code editor. We can see here that we have a Cloudinary URL. We're particular, we're going to reference this res.cloudinary.com and we can see that it has my cloud name of Colby Demo, but we have this image fetch API. And this was all generated for us on the fly using the Cloudinary build URL library. The way that it's actually working is it's generating these different parameters for us inside of the URL, which is configuring how we actually want this image to be put together. So for instance, when we changed our 500 pixels to 280 pixels, all it was doing was changing how it's actually applying these little parameters inside of the URL. But once it creates that Cloudinary URL, what it's simply doing because of the way that we're using the fetch mechanism for remote images, it's simply applying our remote image at the end of that URL so that when all is said and done, it's going to apply all those transformations to the URL that we're passing it. And once it does, Cloudinary will then take that image, store it inside of its CDN, and then serve it lightning fast every time thereafter. But rather than trying to have to manage that URL manually, that's why we're using the build URL function, which just makes it a little bit easier to do so inside of JavaScript. So going back to our image, if we go back to our page, we can see we have all the used URLs, but before we actually start debugging how that image looks, let's actually just replace the images so that we can start seeing it inside the browser. So now that we know that source is going to be our URL, we can simply take that source and we re can replace our image source with that value. And when the page reloads, we can see that we have all those images, but we're back to our problem where we have our skewed images. And once that reloads in the browser, we can see that all of our images are loaded, but as we noticed before, they still are skewed. So to fix this, we're currently using the resize type of scale, but instead we wanna use the resize type of fill, which what that's going to do instead where scale is going to just squash it down to that 280 by 280, but instead we wanna take that source image and just say that we wanna cover as much of it as possible for the 280 by 280 without actually manipulating or changing what that original ratio looks like. But once the page updates, we can see that our images are looking much better where we have the correct ratio for all these images, but we still have a little bit of another issue where we can see 11 particularly is getting cut off inside of the image. Now, on top of being able to transform these images and dynamically crop them, we can also use face detection where Cloudinary can detect where the face is inside the image and smartly or intelligently crop it based on that location. If we look inside of the Cloudinary documentation and scroll down, we can see that the way that this is actually happening is by using the gravity property where we're setting the gravity property to face. And when using our Cloudinary build URL, it's going to be the exact same thing where we're going to pass in that gravity property along with how we want to apply that gravity, which again is going to be simply face. So inside of my transformations object, I'm going to specify another property of gravity. And I'm going to set that to face. 
And once our page updates again, we can see that now not only do we have our images looking in the square and correct ratio, but 11 is actually centered inside of that frame. Now to take this even a step further, if we wanted to create thumbnails out of these as opposed to just simply resizing them, there's also another property for the resize type of thumbnail. So in order to use that, again, inside of transformations and resize and type, instead of using fill, we're going to pass in the string of thumb. And when the page reloads, we can see that not only were the images actually resized and crop and centered, but it was zoomed in so that it was specifically focused on each of their faces. Now, if that's a little bit too zoomed in, we can even set a zoom property where right after gravity, I'm going to set my zoom and I'm going to say, how about 0.8? And we can see that it's still nice and centered on everybody's faces, but it's a little bit less of an extreme close up. The cool thing is we were able to make all these changes on the fly where we were able to simply use the external image URLs that we already have and pass those right into Cloudinary to generate for us. Cloudinary is a super powerful image API that allows us to transform our images to do a lot of different things in order to provide a better experience for the visitors of our sites. What's your favorite use case of Cloudinary? Is it a simple example like this, or how about generating social images on the fly? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, if you wanna learn how you can create blurred placeholder images using the Next.js image component, check out my video, Next.js image with Cloudinary. Or if you wanna learn how to create an image gallery with a grid, similar to how we just did with our Stranger Things wiki, check out my video, Responsive Grid of Products with CSS Grid. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up, subscribe, and click that little notification bell for future updates. Thanks for watching.